You see, I find flaws in the system and I have my opinion on things because I have first-hand experience and there's nothing worse than fake people. The ones that pretend they know what they're talking about. The ones that, that think they have the right to talk about something really, um, they, have, they have no experience. And because they have no experience, they always get found out in the end. You know, it's a fact of life. I've, I've sort of got my own analogy on things. Um, how can I explain it? Everybody wants to be a cage fighter, but no one wants to get a black eye. Everyone wants to be a gangster, but no one's prepared to go to prison. And everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but no one wants to do a diet. If you think about that analogy, it's true. Now, you see, when I left jail in 2008, um, I actually had to steal, I had to steal prison clothes because I, I, I didn't have anything. Um, I had a, a cousin who was an alcoholic, uh, who was looking after all of my um, belongings and uh, he phoned me when I was in jail and said to me that um, he got broken into and it was all my stuff that coincidentally got nicked. Um, so I literally had to steal prison clothes. I had £80, which is what the, uh, the prison gives you the day you leave. And, uh, I had to go back and stay with my nan and start all over again. Now they say that you're, you go to prison and the purpose of that is to get rehabilitated. But I don't see how that's possible. You know, when you're in prison, you know, how, how can you get rehabilitated when you're playing a PlayStation 2 with Grand Theft Auto where you're in your cell killing police officers and raping women and robbing nightclubs? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, you, how's that rehabilitation? <laughs> and then when you come out, you know, they say that, um, you know, your time's spent, you can, you can move on. Well, I don't see how that's possible either because every time I tried to get a job, um, I would tell them about my criminal record and they wouldn't give me a job. So the only times I did get a job, let's say with agencies, I even worked for an agency um, loading and unloading lorries for DPD in Peterborough. That was like minimum wage. And I only got that job because I lied and uh, I didn't tell them about my criminal record. And then I got found out and of course I got the sack. Then I ended up uh, working for Hot Point Intercept as customer service on the phones. And again, I lied about having a criminal record and somebody recognized me, told the boss, and I got sacked. I, I had the, uh, <laughs> the embarrassment of being escorted off the premises by security. You know, like I was still a criminal. And Kirsty at the time was pregnant with Aaliyah. And I didn't have, I didn't have, I, could, I couldn't do anything. You know, I, I even went to the job seekers to, claim, to sign on and I couldn't even sign on at the time because I never claimed enough national insurance over the last two and a half, uh, three years. And the reason why that was because I was in prison. So it's sort of a catch-22 and you wonder why people end up committing crimes and going back to prison. I remember walking out of the job centre, being told I couldn't sign on after being sacked by agencies, can't get a job, Kirsty's pregnant. And I remember being at the um, traffic lights when this this, these lads will, uh, drove up in the in this convertible Mercedes, blasting out hip hop. They had all the chains on. I was just looking. I'm thinking, man, bang him in the face, take what he's got, and just what, what else? What other choice have I got? But I didn't. I decided to um, I decided to be cleverer than that. And uh, and the people that do that don't have a brain. So it was alleged from that point. Um, uh, I started sending steroids out of the boot of my car. Um, from, uh, apparently, old friends, um, training partners, and doormen. It was alleged that I built myself up uh, so big that I ended up uh, being a part of one of the biggest uh, steroid underground steroid labs um, in the UK, Chemical Solutions. It was also alleged that they used to operate out of here. Two containers, 40 foot containers. And then in 2015, was it 2015? No, 2014, uh, they got busted. And uh, they lost 114,000 uh, pounds overnight. It was alleged that I was a part of that and everybody around me 
uh, including my family, um, my close friends, all got arrested and all got questioned about me. Um, I never got arrested, uh, all pulled in for interview, not once. Um, I had invested um, some money at the time and I had a gym started and I had a shop. Um, so I was just sort of you know, sat back, um, listened to all of the uh, allegations that people were sort of making. And I just let it blow over. But I think that's probably why I get a hard time from the police now because I've built a successful business up from an internet following. And it's quite hard to believe that I'm in a position I am now just from social media, from something that happened pretty much overnight. I mean, after all that was alleged, um, soon after, I then found out that my business partner, Bill Nichols, of three years, uh, robbed me. Um, the credit card machine was getting paid into his personal bank account for three years. Um, the business wasn't registered as a partnership, it was registered as a sole trade under Luke Nichols. Uh, he, he shafted me good and proper. And it was Simon Fan. Um, one of my best friends in Birmingham, who owns Ultima Fitness, who gave me 25 grand cash uh, to get him out. And I got him out. And then, I think it was two days later, um, Luke had broken into my gym and uh, took the safe. I had a contract made to say that he couldn't open another gym within uh, 10 miles for two years. And he left all the money, left all the supplements, took the safe that he fitted. And the only thing that was in that safe was the contract, funnily enough. But um, it was raining that night. Uh, White Arches Caravans, which is uh, a business next door, had them on camera. And a bit of paper had happened to fall out off the printer and they left a clear footprint. So uh, I think the following day, Luke Nichols was arrested um, and his house was searched, but he didn't find anything. I had all that going on. And then obviously throughout the following six months after that, uh, Luke Nichols and his missus, Sian Jody Bates, you know, they couldn't handle the fact that they lost Alpha and they got to Lindsay, uh, my partner at the time. We had a son, just been born. And they told Lindsay that I cheated on her for over a year and a half, which wasn't true. Um, and then Lindsay planned to leave me over a period of three months, slept with me, right up until the day before. I was none of the wiser. I come home one day, two days after Christmas, and uh, she disappeared with my son. Just took him and then left a nasty dictaphone to say that um, I've been cheating on her with this woman, that woman, this woman, that woman, and Luke Nichols had told her everything, and then, uh, which wasn't true. Wasn't true. I would never have done that to her. And then uh, Luke Nichols and his wife put a, a message on my fan page two days after Lindsay left me saying, ha, 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 Lindsay left you. We told you that uh, we would make you lose everything. So I've had pretty much first-hand fucking experience of, of most things. And um, people know me now as Aaron Lambo on the internet. Aaron Lambo has got his car towed. <laughs> and they think, why is Aaron Lambo doing a movie? Well, you know, there's a lot more to me, even before the alleged <laughs> uh, lockups and, and the alleged labs uh, and all of that. There's a, there's a lot to me. And um, like I told you, if, if I can make a success out of my life, then um, anybody can. But do you know the, the, the most ironic thing? They, they talk about irony. Irony. This is, this is where the alleged uh, lab got busted, where the lockups were. Uh, well, it's not an alleged lab. This is where the lab got busted. This is where the, the lockups were. And, uh, and, and people thought I was involved in it. And we got that started. And then with Luke. Uh, Losing Alpha, when Lindsay left me and Luke done me, I had about 90 pounds to my name. And this is all where it happened. And how's this for our irony? Now look. <laughs> you never know what's around the next corner. It's true. Don't ever fucking give up. Because one day you might be sitting in a cell thinking, fuck. One day you might have the worst news that you just lost a shitload of money and you think, fuck. One day you might go home and your missus is gone or she's with another man or fuck. One day you think your closest friends, the ones that you were there for, that you lied for at one point, that you backed up at one point, that you made yourself skint for at one point, lent them, lent them your rent money at one point, fuck you and you think, fuck. All you gotta do is keep that self-belief. Fuck everybody else. 
thinker number one. Because um, I've never known irony like it. <laughs> and I think uh, it literally is a story that you couldn't make up, you couldn't write it. And I think that is... Uh, that's what people love about Aaron Lambert. So don't talk about shit that you know nothing about. And make sure you know everything about a person before you start having opinions on them. Or make sure you have know everything about a situation or about a topic before you start having opinions on them. On that note, I'm going back to after training. <laughs> after training, baby.